Steve is doing something today that he rarely does. You see, Steve doesn't like, or doesn't think, his life is all that interesting to warrant a public speech about a sentiment, which I agree about myself. However, today, Steve would like to share with you a personal story of lifelong friendship and why his best friend is a hero and inspiration to him. Please welcome Steve McGurley. fellow Tussmasters. When I was a kid, every Saturday morning, my mom would pile the five of us into the car and we would go off to Laurel Lanes to bowl in a junior bowling league where my mom was a coach for the league. The freshman year of high school, about 14 years of age, early in the season my mom comes up to me as I was the captain of my team and she said, we have another boy who is grown to be too good for the league that he's currently in, he wants to move up to our league. Can he join your team? And on that day started a lifelong friendship of spanning 40 years now. That was the day I met my best friend, Don DiVincenzi. And like books and in movies, bro love is... <laughs> <laughs> Rarely in pairs, right? It's usually a menage a trois. And, and within a year, Don brought his friend, Mike, Mike Long, to join the team. And over the last 40 years, Don, Mike, and I have, just as the three musketeers, the three amigos, and the three stooges, have been friends. Now, there were some challenges here in the early years of the friendship because we saw each other every Saturday. But Mike and Don lived on the other side of town from where I lived. And to make it even more challenging, we all attended different high schools. But once I was, got my driver's license, and Mike got his and Don as well, then we became inseparable. If I was not at school or at work, I was usually at Don's house. And it seemed to work out fine for my parents that I wasn't around. I'm not sure why. <laughs> Maybe I made the house better being gone. When you have four sisters, maybe that works a little that way. But Don's mom, Rita, became like a second mother to me. And we did everything that you would imagine friends would do. We played sandlot tackle football together, played basketball, played tennis. And if you ever played Don in tennis, you'd pray that his first service would not be in because there was no way you could return it. It was so hard and fast swimming together, everything that friends would do. And it was here in this time that I developed a love of the game of hearts, the, the card game hearts. And we would play that together, especially in winter evenings. Don's mom, Rita, and sometimes his grandmother, who we called the Big G, would join us as well. In a failed attempt to actually become part of Don's family formally, I actually dated a few of his cousins. <laughs> <laughs> After graduating high school, <laughs> Mike was the first to marry, and Don the last. And although Reiko, my wife and I, uh, dispatched with the formalities of a, of a formal wedding, and did not give my friends this opportunity, Don and I stood by Mike's side at his wedding, and Mike and I stood by Don's side at his wedding. And by good luck, great judgment on our parts, or poor judgment on our spouse's parts, divorce is a stranger to our homes. I return to Ohio once or twice a year, and although I always make time to make sure that I visit with my mom and my sisters, I almost always stay with either Don or Mike. And whenever we're together, of course, that crazy game of hearts usually ensues, and, and because of that, our kids also enjoy playing the game too as well. A nice tradition we passed down. So whoever said that you can't choose your relatives, I disagree with. Because I say I have two brothers from different mothers and four <laughs> sisters that we share the same common mother with. My last trip to Ohio was just a few weeks ago. I went to a nephew's wedding. And current events at the time actually forced me to think about something consciously which never comes in my mind. Just a few weeks ago, we had these news reports of the horrible bullying attempts or bullying actions to young girls, one in Florida and one in Texas. 
Unfortunately, the girl in Florida threw herself from an abandoned tower to end the bullying. The girl in Texas is a special needs child and probably does not have the full mental capacity to recognize the meanness and evil being perpetrated upon her. But her mother does. Now, why did this bring to my consciousness this lifelong friendship, especially of Don? And the reason why is because Don has cerebral palsy. Now, you think about this, and it's quite amazing, because everything I told you is true. He bowled on our team, we played tackle football, played basketball, everything, because he was fortunate enough to have cerebral palsy affect only half his brain. So only the right side of his body was severely impacted, and he stuttered. And Don is really an exceptional person, but when you look at somebody with cerebral palsy and you think about these reports of bullying, you know that in his childhood he had to have gone through these things, even though I never saw them personally firsthand. But I did see firsthand that his own biological father was ashamed of him, did not want people to know that he was his son, divorced his mother when he was young, and was rarely around. More importantly, I've seen over the years the discrimination that he has to endure. Discrimination from prospective employers who will not hire him, even though he was a National Honor student in high school and achieved his college degree in information technology. And today they continue to discriminate against him and exploit him. <coughs> Can you imagine an information technology specialist, an experienced one today, making less than $10 an hour? You'll understand what exploitation means. Not long ago, Don told me that he was proud of me. And he was referring to my achievements in my career. However, my accomplishments pale in comparison to what he has done in his life. Before he reached the age of 21, he achieved more than what most of us would achieve in a lifetime. His mother was told that he would never walk. He would never have a normal life. But he has, other than the discrimination that is insidious and mostly on the quiet side. And through all this, he has maintained a positive attitude. And he doesn't let things stop him from trying to reach his goals. He may not be able to reach them, but he continues to try. I'm proud of my best friend, Don. He's a hero to me, and a friend I trust and can trust and do trust with anything and everything. Ayn Rand said that our heroes should be fictional characters because they can never disappoint you. But Ayn Rand did not know Don. Thank you.